allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, I see we have no public hearings tonight. So the next thing on the agenda is the consent agenda, which is the minutes of the September 22nd, 2015 meeting. I move that we approve the consent I'll be, agenda. I would just like to. Well, you want to make comments? Yeah, on the minutes. Okay. Uh, and Michelle, it could be my delivery, how I did it, because I cannot remember. But it was actually Barry who went to that uh, business downtown. And I think, uh, Barry, you had told me that uh, Bill Aldridge had sort of introduced that to you and and talked to them. Not necessarily me. I thought it was a great idea, and that's something that the Central Business District will probably take over with the boards and things like that. But I want to give credit where credit's due, and that was Mr. Helms. Okay. So if I have that change, I'll make a motion. <laughs> I'll second. Motion and a second. Uh, we'll stop. She ready? Can I get the second on that? Mr. Hall. That's me. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hubbard? Here. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Councilman Van Hoosier? Aye. I have five eyes and a yep, so I guess that's six yes, eyes. <laughs> Very good, thank you. Uh, we have no recognitions tonight, I don't believe. Citizens Hearing, we have a tourism update by Lisa Blakely, Executive Director of Tourism. Lisa? to give you a tourism update, and this is my annual update. Um, the Tourism Board and I would like to thank you for your continued fiscal support of this very young program. Um, you support it through a portion of the transient occupancy taxes, which is also known as the bed tax, and is paid by visitors which stay in our lodging establishments within the town of, uh, towns of Christiansburg, Blacksburg, and the county. Um, this illustration just shows what uh, your, these tax dollars do. It fuels the engine of um, bringing travelers into our area, having them part with more of their dollars, and that results in tax revenues and jobs. It's through these dollars that we market the area, support the local hospitality and tourism businesses, and facilitate the product development for future growth all with the ultimate goal of injecting new dollars into our community, more tax revenue for citizen services, creation of jobs, both direct and indirect, and increase the quality of life for our citizens. This presentation is focused on fiscal year 14 because that was the last full year that was re reported and shared with our office from the Virginia Tourism Corporation. However, this presentation will be within the context of FY 13 through 15 for trending purposes. So we do not have empirical data uh, as of yet as to the number, concrete number of visitors to all of Montgomery County. But in 2014, largely because I get questioned on it a lot and also applying for grants, um, those granting uh, Grantors look for benchmarks, and that is our baseline of what we have, what is now, and what we expect as a result of any funding dollars that we get and correlated marketing initiatives. So we, um, for lack of any empirical data, have used a methodology just kind of internally to estimate in 2014 we had uh, around 700,000 visitors. That could be more. 
probably not less. But we used several sources for that. Um, uh, that included the Virginia Tech football study that was just released this year. We have talked to the Christiansburg Aquatic Center, to the um, Parks and Rec Department, looking at the tournaments that came into our area that draw the uh, Super Bowl, the New River uh, Valley Super Bowl, had thousands of bowlers in and spectators through the months of June and July. Um, we know that there's corporate business in the area. We also know that there's plenty of entertainment and shopping in our area, and people come here for that primary purpose. We also have a big old interstate coming right through our area, and we know that through VDOT numbers, that there are, there's a percentage of those folks that will get off of the interstate. They may stay for a little while, they may stay just long enough to gas up and catch a meal, but they're coming in and they're dropping dollars in our area. So there's many different sources, and we took our best guess we're hoping um, that we'll be able to get some of that empirical research done uh, if we are awarded, hopefully, uh, after this cycle that we've recently applied for um, some research done on a visitor profile. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, and this illust illustrates just how those dollars come in through our travelers and they spend money on fuel or maybe car repairs or public transportation. They're spending money on entertainment, lodging, uh, purchasing food. And then uh, towards the bottom part of this illustration, it just shows where those um, dollars are converted into tax revenue and it helps provide citizens for our uh, services for our citizens and also provides jobs both direct within the industry and also indirect through suppliers and vendors and so forth. So the 2014 numbers are in from the Virginia Tourism Corporation. Those numbers were reported, um, derived and reported by the U.S. Travel Association, which uh, collects, collects numbers and reports for um, many of the states, 30-some states within the U.S. Statewide, these are our numbers. I won't read them off. Uh, but they're pretty large numbers. Again, that is statewide, and that is directly attributed, attributed to tourism spending in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So what does that look like for us in Montgomery County? I would say that, let you know that this is Montgomery County. The VTC does not break, the, break it out into towns as far as reporting on expenditures. Um, so a total visitor spending throughout the county in both towns was 136.3 million and then so on and so forth with, with uh, jobs and state and local taxes. So in Montgomery County, there's a combined uh, a little better than 8 million with state and uh, local taxes that are generated from visitor spending. What does that mean? And I forgot to bring my big check, but normally uh, if you do a little simple arithmetic, you take that combined state and local uh, uh, figure and you divide it by the number of households households in Montgomery County. And for 2014, what that would mean is each, each household, not citizen, but household, in Montgomery County uh, basically got $233.60. They didn't get it in the mail, but they got it in the form of taxes that would have been paid if it were not for tourism spending in our area. And so uh, over the years, and I look back from 2012, as you may recall, um, I was brought on board the end of 2012, and we, uh, it took you know, a good year to kind of get things, learn the lay of the land, and get some organization. Since 2012, we have been trending upwards. This chart shows um, uh, travel, travelers' expenditures. Let's see if I can find a pointer on this. Yeah. These are the dollars that travelers spend. Uh, in our area for 2012, 13, and 14, and these are the correlated taxes as a result. So trending upwards, that's the way we want to head. And this chart shows uh, in jobs. I had combined them earlier and it did some weird things with the numbers. So you can see that um, as we uh, increase uh, travel, you know, travelers coming into the area and they, their needs and wants are increased, then we need people to do that work as well. And then I took a look at Christiansburg specifically because VTC reports out and also in working with uh, Val and the numbers that she collects on meals and lodging, um, I was able to 
uh, determine how much is collected in Christiansburg alone. That's the only thing that BTC breaks out for the localities. Um, but I, I show this uh, just to say these are these are pretty hefty numbers, and they're they're trending up in lodging, in food. I would say note at this point that we get we in the program get a percent of this lodging from Christiansburg as well as the town of Blacksburg and the county to fund the program. So we don't see all this, of course, and we we don't get any of the meals tax, which fair number of localities do take a percent of that to fund their tourism program as well, but ours is only a percent of the lodging. Again, these measures are trending upwards. Um, I also am able to uh, see what we look like as a destination. Um, this acronym stands for Smith Travel Research. They are a company I purchased a report from to show me uh, the number of properties in our locality. It also shows um, when they were open, some that closed. It shows the number of rooms with each proper, lodging property. It also shows how we're doing um, as far as keeping those rooms filled and so on and so forth. So this has been a pretty, uh, pretty good piece of information for me. Um, from 2012 to 2015, our market has realized an increase in the overall occupancy rate, and that is people staying in lodging rooms. Um, from 56.7% to 60.1%. And the ADR, which is the average daily rate, that's the rate that a lodging property can charge for its room uh, based on market conditions, has also increased from um, an average room rate of $83.81 to $89.30. And then there's another metric we use is called REVR. That's revenue uh, per available room, and that takes into account all of the uh, inventory, the lodging rooms that we have, not only the ones that were sold, but all. That metric has also increased um, over from 2012, and that started out at $47.48, uh, $47.48 per um, available room, to now $53.66, and that's not. We all know that there's rooms that are much higher than that on an individual basis, but again, this is de destination wide. So we continually we continue to dil diligently work on the, st the strategic tourism plan. Uh, we had five goals, if you recall, on that plan. We're still working them up. We have worked really hard to increase uh, tourism marketing. And you see Irene, she is my part-time gal. She's interning with me and she's done great. Uh, a great job in helping me, you know, get get with it on social media and all the channels that are available to us there. But we've also produced this tear-off map. I shared that with you early on. The hotels are loving this. That there was a couple of gas stations that actually hit me up last week to get some more of these. So we've got to look at a way that we that we can actually get these continue to have this sustainable because we paid for this out of the budget to have it not designed because we worked in house to do that but to have it printed and then distributed we we're hitting the burning little shoe leather to get those out and about miss Bleakley, i really apologize for interrupting you um no, but just on that specific thing there just knowing this we were in vml this past week and, and just trying to figure out or find a map that shows all those those particular destinations and we are really not a lot of localities that have them um is something like that available online as well Yep. It will be. We're currently working on the website development, and that's been a little bit longer than I had hoped it would be, but I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I just met with the agency yesterday, and we've been in constant communication, but we did a catch-up, and um, hopefully I will have those web pages delivered in my hand by November, and what that means is fully designed, and we've been working on images and copy, and this map, mm -hmm. getting back to your point, is kind of the crown jewel of that sure. website because not only you know we know that people plan on their desktop but once they're in um, in the destination they're at mobile so we wanted something that the can, we can put the experience back in the visitor's hand uh, that we're not simply putting static maps online so that's a good question I appreciate you asking sure. thank you um, Okay, so many other things are going on marketing-wise. We're working on the marketing plan uh, to launch, uh, to basically say, you know, we're here. We're a destination. We want your business. Uh, and that is the, that's the focus of not only the website, but everything we're doing in marketing right now is building that awareness. 
There's a fair number of people who know who we are, where we are, what we're all about, but there's a fair number of people who do not. Even those who are somewhat familiar with our area, believe it or not, they still need to, to have that awareness uh, built there. And then we'll be uh, participating in uh, digital, probably leaning more towards digital versus traditional uh, when it comes to advertising and so forth because we want to drive visitors to that website, we want to drive them to the mobile site uh, so that we can get the, get the information in their hands when they need it, the information that they need when they need it. Um, also in front of you, we've been working on some other things. Uh, there's a couple pieces, a trail guide of the New River Valley. That was a, that came out of a grant that uh, Montgomery County and also the other counties in the city of Radford and the New River Valley, we collaborated on that with the help of the, reg uh, the regional commission. And so we're pretty proud of that. That's hot off the presses. It's out in our libraries, parks and rec departments, in our visitor center in the county uh, building. and. Uh, also, we tweeted and talked about it a lot on social media, and people are asking for that. So help us spread the word on that. There's more. Uh, we've got plenty more and can get more of those printed. Also, there's a farmer's market uh, rack card, which came out of a planning grant that we worked with uh, other uh, Pulaski and Giles on the ag uh, tourism plan. And so that has been printed. It's been out for a while in all those places I mentioned before. On that note, uh, we are working on a comprehensive visitor guide, uh, but in the interim, uh, Christiansburg has a nice piece there. I see in front of Mr. Huppert that you guys produced. Blacksburg has one as well. And so we have paid to have 18,000 of those printed for each of the towns and paid to have them distributed at um, four of the state welcome centers and along the I-81-77 corridor. And I checked them. I'm kind of a nerd that way. Every time I travel, I'm stopping in the Welcome Center and I'm stopping along the interstate rest area to make sure that they're there. And I should have put a picture in here because I have plenty of them. I always snap to make sure that they're stocked. Um, but they do. They, they do a good job and they let me know when they're running low. Somebody gets more in the warehouse. Uh, but I'm really hoping to have that comprehensive guide uh, up and, and stocked in those uh, areas next year. But thankful to the two towns for you know, having those pieces to work with in the interim. Mr. Hall, you mentioned the website, and I wanted to share. Uh, this is in development, and this is kind of a sneak preview of uh, is some screenshots of how we see this site unfolding. Uh, there's ways to navigate, but we wanted to keep it simple, clean design. Again, focusing on building the awareness for this area. We recognize our different audiences. Uh, we recognize the challenge of keeping straight, you know, Montgomery County and then Blacksburg has its own thing, Christiansburg has its own thing, but how do we all work together? And that's what the visitors are looking for. They're coming into our area and they just want to know where to sleep, eat, have fun, and all those sorts of things and take care of their primary business. So we tried to present it in this way. Um, Again, looking at building awareness. This little map up in the left, uh, that's going to be a little bit more colorful as we, this again is a mock up. But the way we see, that's one portal to get into a specific place. You see, if, you, if this were active and you were able to hover over uh, Christiansburg, that would take you straight into where this will also take you into. And then you have a third way, it's a navigation icon up here to take you straight into a locality, whether it be Christiansburg, Blacksburg, or Montgomery County. And then once you do that, then let's just say you're into the Christiansburg uh, portal. At this point, you know where you are because it is uh, highlighted and it says, and here, these are rotating hero images. Right now, again, these are just placeholders. But we've identified uh, three to five right now, just to start out with, uh, to highlight. And then we expect those to be rotating. Again, I'm kind of, I have to be, from my point of view, be a little careful in what we put here. Uh, because, as you know, being a government entity, uh, getting into the private sector, we get, you know, it may be a revenue kind of opportunity to be highlighted. I'm not sure the fair way to do that yet. But the way to get everyone represented is through that map that Mr. Hall was asking about. And uh, once you drill down a little further, you're into that map. And right now we're looking at a couple of options. One is to customize a Google map. 
and one is uh, for a totally custom uh, map that we'd be able to do a whole lot with and we not, won't necessarily be able to do with Google. Um, so we're kind of in the weeds on that one right now, just trying to figure out what would be the best option. Uh, and then um, this is just a snapshot. It won't be as dark as it appears here, but a snapshot just to show uh, some other options that would be available to the user. Uh, itinerary builder. We're calling this for students now. That's going to be a change. We've, to we've tossed around the idea of game day or something like that. What we envision for this is for a user to be able to come to the website and whether they're here for uh, you know, a hokey football game, whether they're here as a parent of a student uh, receiving orientation, whether it be at Tech or whether it be at Radford, whether they're here for, with swim meets or you know, ball tournaments or any of those things, we don't want them to necessarily have to wade through a lot before they get to where they know they need to be. And so that'll be renamed, but for right now it's become a placeholder and that's what we see there. Media resources. That would be images and some information uh, that the media could use, Marty. Uh, newsletter sign up. Uh, we do do a newsletter now. I hope that you've all have, are familiar with it. Um, we have a new one coming out, I think, probably pretty soon if it didn't go out today. Uh, but we want our visitors to be able to, to sign up for that as well as our industry uh, partners. And then visitor guide will be available digitally as well. Oops. Well, let's see here. Okay, more marketing. Just This is just show we had a lot of activity over the last two months, I tell you. Uh, good thing I took my multivitamin. Uh, you know, we were out doing a lot of regional collaboration at Outdoor, um, this Abington and Outdoor Expo. Then I was in Richmond at the UCI International Bike uh, Race. These two guys, by the way, are from Christiansburg. Uh, he is Maurice and he is David Price. I don't know if you know either one of them, but they are bikers and they were there uh, participating, not participating, but they are in the expo there in Richmond. And then bottom, we were, we were doing a lot with the Crooked Road, um, Round the Mountain, Artisan Trail, and also Appalachian <coughs> Spring. Uh, these guys are uh, from VTC and he's from the Crooked Road and we got free exhibit space here as we did for that bike festival. So I'm jumping on every one of those opportunities, free exhibit space. Uh, and then, I don't know, I saw some of you guys out at the Egg Festival, so we, while we don't create events, and one large reason is because we don't, we're spending a lot of time promoting, so creating events will be its own office almost, it'd be a full-time job, but we don't want to be in competition with the, with the organizations already doing a great job with events. So as much as we can, we get out there and support and continue to build that awareness uh, and advocacy really when we're inside the community. And then this last picture is showing we had a writer in town from Recreation News uh, and they target, it's a publication targeted to government employees in Northern Virginia and DC and so she was in town Thursday and Friday. We got her a backstage tour, Mr. Van Hooser. <laughs> I know you're talking about this back of house tours and this was great. She, she will we'll get a great article out of this. We were not only in uh, Blacksburg and Virginia Tech doing the whole back of the house tour there in their new facilities. But um, we were over at Christiansburg, we, f we familiarized her with our mall area, we had supper at the Blackstone, and so we really gave her a sense of what we're all about here, and that is we're a great jumping off place. You know, we've got a lot of great things going on, but also we're well positioned for visitors to be able to take part in all these other um, activities around. Uh, Okay. Lisa, I'm sorry, I voted, for you. You were, I voted for you. You're number seven. With the, uh, the egg oh, you did? Yeah. Good. Marinated plain steak. We actually took uh, a tie for best dessert. We call it meat candy. No, it was great, it was great to see you out there. Yeah, it's fantastic. It was good times. Uh, so, goal two was building that infrastructure. And this basically speaks to, if you guys remember, uh, a visitor center. We're not there yet, we're just not. So we're trying to do all we can to get this information out through the avenues that we have available to us. Uh, goal three, I've talked a little bit about developing partnerships already. We'll continue to do that. That allows us to do more with less and we could do, we could achieve more together than we ever could alone. And I, I know in talking with uh, several other folks, like Brad from the, the town, and just when we reach out and partner with our universities here and with those around us in the New River Valley, I mean, we're hard to beat as a package. 
uh, developing tourism education programs and advocacy. You know, most of the time as a uh, DMO, we're outward focused. Our customers are 50 miles out or greater. But we also recognize we have the need to build that advocacy within the community. And so we held a familiarization tour, or FAM tour as we call it in the biz, back in May during the National Travel and Tourism Week. We chartered a bus from right here in Montgomery County. Uh, we carried uh, approximately 40 folks, and they came from the industry, mostly the industry. Marty was one of our uh, tour guides. But we had some folks from just right here, lived right here in the community all their lives and weren't familiar with some of the places we went out to see. So I call that a success, and we hope to do more of those every year. Maybe not as long. That was a whole day. We heard from feedback. You know, we enjoyed it, but maybe, you know, more of them, but half days. So we're taking that to heart and already working on uh, some the future ones. And then goal five, uh, you know, building a strong, strong program and uh, strong policy. And so I participated in uh, Tourism Day at General um, Assembly with VHTA. We are a member of VHTA, and that enables us to stay on the cutting edge for our industry. Those restaurants, the lodging folks, the attractions. And uh, I got a chance to talk with many of our state legislators and impressing upon them as to the value of tourism and what we're doing right here in Montgomery County. And then coming up, uh, you are familiar, I'm sure, with the drive tourism that we'll be participating in very soon. And so I'm very hopeful for that. And that is only, uh, we're only uh, looking at Christiansburg for this particular one. We are one of only 23, I think, very uh, communities statewide that um, were se selected for and will have gone through this by the end of this year. So that is focused on product development. I think that'll be a big help to us. Whew, that was a lot, and I apologize for going over my time, but I could talk a lot more, and we can do that later, or you can ask me any questions now. I'd be happy to, to answer. Lisa, I have a quick question. Uh, actually, maybe two. Number one, what what is the uh, what will the web address be when it's up and running? Do you, you know? Right now, right now it is um, visit Montva, visit m o n t v a dot com, and that will point you to the county's economic development website, a page on their website that um, talks a lot about the same things that tourists are interested in. Mm -hmm. So that's been a great stopgap for us while we're developing this dedicated tourism site. We are um, talking about what to, to uh, what URL to use. We're, that's not a set on Visit Monfa because as you can see from some of the branding elements, uh, like that little notepad you have in front of you, our, uh, our brand name basically is Blacksburg Christiansburg and in, in the community Montgomery County is on there. Outside the community we elected not to really put Montgomery County in the mix because it gets confusing uh, to some folks because there's a Montgomery County, Maryland, which sets right there right. almost in Virginia. We'll so <laughs> that's the purpose for those two. We, didn't, we don't want to confuse a visitor or potential visitors any more than they might already be. So we're leading with the towns. Branding was a big issue at VML. Um, they had a whole segment that was dedicated to that and we knew, of course, back, back home that we were already engaged in, in branding in and of itself to help us get, our, you know, get the word out for our, our tourism and that initiative. So it's always nice to know that we were proactive in that regard. So. Uh, yeah, I appreciate your your involvement uh, and your uh, leadership on that. Have you? And the last question I have for you is: Have you seen through your work through the uh, Virginia Tourism Cooperative that a lot of localities are jumping on board with the and branding their particular areas as far as driving this tourism, or is it are some of them truly fell falling behind? Or uh, do you the most savvy more? ones are branding. I mean, they've been at this game for a sure. long time. Uh, the tier one, definitely. Tier two, that's like where I came from, Virginia Beach, Charlotte, kinds of areas, definitely. Uh, the tier three, the smaller market, smaller to mid. Many of them are. Some of them still aren't putting money there. Mm -hmm. But we know just being just being consumers, you got to get the message out there quickly to impart just to get the attention. So. Uh, while some people think of branding, what's the big deal, you know, I mean, are you a Coke or are you a Pepsi person? So, you know, when we're up against Boone, North Carolina, you know, what, what is our brand? So what's going to attract those folks? There's one last thing I'd like to leave you with, if you have time, it's our brand essence video. And that is not an external, it's for internal use, but it's one minute. And if it works, I can click on that logo and it'll play one minute to impart what our brand is. And it's more of an emotional kind of 
a thing, but not for advertising. Can you go back a couple slides to the, you know, the partners that you had up there? Right there. Uh -huh. Now, um, you know, one of the things we're doing is we formed a downtown advisory board for Christiansburg. So that's going to be coming here in the next year. It's still in its infancy, but I was wondering, like, the museum, are they up there? Or I see that the Moss is above. Is it? That's the Moss, isn't it? No, that's it's Montgomery a Museum. That's a museum. Yeah, and this is kind of an older slide, actually, in the interest of time. There's been many more partners that have been added, but that's the, that's the Moss that sits under Center for the Arts. Montgomery Museum is here. But uh, I was wondering if our, our departments, like the Rack Center, um, Central business when it gets up and rolling here in a few years, or the downtown uh, advisory board, and also Terry the Aquatic. I'm sure we're partnering some in there, but if we can all, if we can, because you see a lot the Black Blacksburg partnership, the BMCF is that the Blacksburg Merchants? No, that is uh, that's the Blacksburg Museum and Cultural Foundation, and actually, again, I, I mean I could. I should have updated this before I came, but the Aquatic Center and I and the Rec, we, we, we have been partnering on, um, on different things and, content, and we'll continue to do that. Okay. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned uh, the uh, downtown advisory. Yeah. Because that really, I'll share in a very, that is one of our challenges here in Christiansburg, uh, actually not just in Christiansburg, probably in both towns, is there's Unless I'm not aware of it, there's no restaurant association. And so what that means is there's not one voice that we can talk and get things done. It's like going individually, you know, to restaurants. There's not a hotel, a motel association. That's a little bit more manageable. I have a list of those. I keep up with the DOSs and the managers, and I'm able to correspond with them. But having those associations like that to get to, like in the mall area, that would be priceless to be able to, you know, really efficiently get get some marketing done. Because I know during the New River Valley Super Bowl when they had those folks in, um, I could have gone straight to those associations and said, hey, look at this group that we've got coming in. This is the value of the group. This is how long they're going to be here. Who would want to partner on this? But I didn't have that one-stop place. I, I went door to door and went knocking and, and did the best I could with one person. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lisa, that was an interesting metric you had earlier in the presentation about, I know it's sort of like fuzzy math, about tourism dollars in Montgomery County per household. It's right. like $230, $233 or something. Yes, um, $233 and okay. $63. That's, that's interesting, and you came from a much larger market, from Virginia Beach, and then, uh, but do you have any idea how we would compare, well, something like Williamsburg or Virginia Beach, or maybe even you know, Pulaski County or... I should have anticipated that question. No, I did not, I just, but I can get that easily no, for you. No, uh, if you knew it right off, don't, don't spend any time on it, but I'd like to know, you know... I can tell you... that in a range. Yeah, know. I can't give you a range off the top of my head right now. I can pull that easily, but I, I can tell you this number is is much greater than any of our New River Valley folks. Okay. I've looked at... Because I've looked at their travel expenditures. <laughs> right. Or much less than those are like in a Virginia Beach. Yeah, I mean, they they're dealing with multi-million dollar budget, right. uh, and even in you know in Roanoke, they've got a three million dollar tourism budget, and their travel expenditures, you know, they all correlate. So, um, but I can pull those no, numbers for you. That's interesting, though, per household. That sort of brings it down to, even though it's fuzzy math, but if it's fuzzy math is used everywhere, you sort of see where you rank. Right, and that's the thing. That's that's the great thing about this Smith Travel Research reporting on all these um, on Virginia and then 30 some states because we can compare apples to apples. Where back in the day, our in industry has been heavily criticized because of fuzzy math. And I'm careful, and I hope that you see it over the years. I'm very conservative with numbers. And if I throw out a number, I want to at least be able to tell you where that number came from as best as my ability to get that number. Let's do the one minute. All right. So we have last. Sorry, I hope it's not making it right. Click on it. It should work. Again, this is not for external use. It is an internal reference point uh, when we are marketing.
straight down right where your arrow was. Yeah. So straight down where your arrow was there. Just come and see. That goes the bottom out. Uh, is there sound here? Oh, shoot. Okay, we have to imagine the sound really evokes emotion. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see some places that aren't in Montgomery County here. I'll warn you about that, but remember our brand is we are well positioned for the visitor to come and stay, eat, be entertained, but also be able to have access quickly to those um, natural and cultural resources around us. And we are positioned between Jefferson and Washington National Forest, the Blue Ridge Parkway. We have the second oldest uh, river in the world. Uh, and so there's a reason that people, you know, have a connection when they come here. Um, and we're kind of leading in this video with those natural, the naturalness of it all. But we know here in Montgomery County, we, they don't have to leave civilization behind. And I'm really sorry about this. <laughs> I will send it to Barry so he can share it with you and you can watch it at your leisure with the sound. And the, not, and the not disjointed advances. The sound wire, when I saw that we, we, we've hidden the wires, is that, was that one of those ones we forgot to hook up? No, we, <laughs> we haven't had sound in here. I'm, I'm kidding. That's a great place to stop. <laughs> well, it goes on. There's some, there's some uh, pans of the Christiansburg Farmers Market. There's the new uh, bridge in the mall area. No, I'm serious. We don't want to put a record board. Everything. Buffer, not buffer. Right there. We talk about it. This worked perfectly before. I'm not sure. It always happens. That's Smithville Plantation. Adamo, which is now White Barrel, in case you haven't heard. Right. And this just looks like a bunch of steels, but when you see it in video form, it's going to be very fluid with the voiceover. It's, uh, it does a nice job of sharing our brand. So I think that's pretty much it. And that's not a great note to end on, but I will share that link with you so you can uh, you can you can be as happy with it as I am. Well, Lisa, the, the trail guide, I, I wasn't aware that we had these. Uh, this is fantastic, and I, I'm not just saying that. I, I, I had no idea we had that many trails in the general area. And that's only a few of them. And this is this is amazing here. Yeah. So thank you very much. You're welcome. You want to get some hands on? Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. Thanks for your patience. Which uh, I have, I have just a, a couple of questions here. Uh huh. Um, uh, the visitor center, the welcome center. Is there any update on that? Uh, I, it's on our board agenda each month when we meet. Uh, as I understand it, we are looking at the park and ride and maybe opportunities there. We're hoping that the, uh, there's going to be two out parcels in front of the park and ride. I talked to the owner and said we'd like to try to work with whoever builds there, say it's a hotel, to have a, a uh, visitor center in the hotel or something so we don't have to have a standalone building and, and uh, somebody will be there 24 hours a day and that kind of stuff. So we'll have our own little, little okay. room or, or I don't know yet. Room. That'll have to be worked out with the first one they develop it yeah. for sure. Depending on what goes in there, whether it's a, you know, a restaurant or a hotel or one of each. Or... I would would that would that please you? I would love to have a place like that, but I will say, I'm patient in that regard. I mean, there's been a lot of talk in our industry about because it costs money, you know, first capital and then to operate it and then to staff it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's on my work plan, and certainly, I would get in there and. and put in, you know, some elbow grease, whatever we need to do to make it happen. Because I feel like we, for a market our size, we do need a receiving place for visitors. Um, but I'm not so worried about it at this, at this juncture. You know what I mean? Because we don't, we don't 
probably in the budget have it to, to staff like it would need to be staffed for a state certified center uh, unless we could I mean, I don't know. I don't know how the creative methods we could work with uh, in, in whatever projects we can, um, there at the park and ride. But um, are, 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 are visitor centers becoming, you know, passe? That's the thing. I mean, I don't, I don't believe that they're becoming passe. I think that there's there's a place for them. Right. Uh, but I have talked with some of my colleagues who run uh, welcome centers, and it's you know they they don't have the traffic that you know maybe once upon a time before we had all this technology. And not that technology is going to replace face to face, certainly not. Uh, but the uh, urgency of of a capital investment at this point, you know, certainly I, something I'd want to see continue to move along. Uh, but we've got many other building blocks of the foundation that we can continue to develop in the interim. You know, I have always thought maybe of having, maybe let, let's say there's a, a Hardee's, okay? And the Hardee's would be one part of the building and then a visitor center would be the other one. Be your, be your own people. You have your own little place, maybe with your own little meeting place and people could just come in there and, and do that. I'm not sure, maybe I'm thinking too much, you know. No, I would say that there is, this market is, uh, there's an opportunity for meeting facilities, meeting space, of which a visitor center could be part of. Uh -huh. That's a void here, but, you know, that's a, that's something that maybe we can discuss in the drive tourism. Workshop. And you guys are, you guys are pretty much continually talking that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the other question I had was, a pro I should know this, I guess, but approximately every year, how much money do we give it to, to, to your office? We estimate about $250,000 a year that comes in from, uh, through both towns and the county. And both towns are right, they're pretty equal in what they contribute. The county is right around 13,000. It's negligible in that way of hard dollars because they simply don't have the lodging uh, properties. Uh, but each town is right around, you know, a hundred and some change. Uh, so we, again, we estimate two hundred fifty thousand, dependent on, uh, you know, the ta tax collected for any given year. Like for instance, <coughs> next year, uh, probably the year twenty sixteen, the Homewood Suites down on Roanoke Street will have been online and people in it, and so your tax collection is probably going to be more if no other rooms go out for any reason. Blacksburg, we had Holiday Inn at University raised, uh, so that was out of the inventory for a while. So their estimated was down a little lower, but when those other two hotels come online, it's going to shoot back up and even surpass probably. Um, so right around easy numbers, right around two hundred fifty thousand. Again, that's that's to fund the whole program, soup to nuts. And the county provides office space, payroll, legal support, all the stuff that. Uh, we don't have to pay for. I will the, add the that they, office would have to pay for. I will add that there uh, was a fund that was um, where the tax was collected over a couple years when there was no activity in the program between when the chamber promoted and when this program the agreement was made and, and they brought me on to start managing. There was a, a gap in there to where uh, there was contributions still being made and held in the in, in the different towns and there now it's all combined within the county and that was roughly 400,000 and that fund is where we take in the monies to pay for website and those kinds of uh, infrequent kinds of things to get us started startup funds I would call it for lack of a better term and you give us on an annual basis what we let's say the, uh, the three entities give you 200,000 and then you'll give us sort of a balance sheet back every year? I mean, I guess I, I should be sitting there. I should be sitting there, and I'm not. We, we get that. Um, we do, okay. Yeah, we, and we go over. Yeah. Well, okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for your time. You're very welcome. <clears throat> this is our citizens' uh, comment section. Anyone would like to address the town on any issues concerning uh, life in beautiful downtown Christiansburg or parts thereof. If you'll come forward, give us your name, address, and address your comments to the chair. Is there no one here to address council? Seeing so, one, I will close that section.
our staff reports. We have an update from the police department by Chief Marks Sisson. So in my life, I have always had to follow a great presentation. Not just like that. That's a great presentation. So uh, before I get into this, I want to make sure that you guys saw the media uh, information we had out about Stop Bullying, October's Anti-Bullying Month, which uh, we're very passionate about. If you have not received information or seen information in the media about that, I would be happy to send that information to you. Um, talk here to talk about the Christopher Police Department. Uh, I tell you, I think this is an outstanding idea to have department heads come before council to brief you. There's a lot of things that you guys know about our organizations. There's a lot of things that you probably do not know. That's one thing I'm going to try to do tonight is touch on a few areas that you guys may not know much about and, and our citizens may not know much about. So I was hoping for a big citizenry crowd tonight, but what I've got is, is good. <laughs> so we'll talk about, and I've provided some hard copy information for you. Uh, talk a little bit about our command structure. I'm not going to go through every rank and file, but I wanted to have that. If you have future questions, uh, please f feel free to call me at any time. Stop in and see me. Um, I'll talk about the two divisions in which our agency is split into, and that's an operations and support division. First of all, I'll just introduce my command staff. Most of you know these individuals because they have been around for a long time. Major Reed, who has been in the agency for 25 years, uh, is my assistant police chief. And then I have uh, two ca captains. Two captains that run our divisions first is Captain Ramsey to your left, who runs the operation division, and Captain Derek Altizer to the right, who runs the support services division. Talk a little bit about the operation division. Uh, within that division, we have a patrol captain who manages four platoon lieutenants, four sergeants, 24 patrol officers, a special operations lieutenant, four vice detectives, which of those four, one is assigned to our DEA Drug Task Force, one to our Virginia State Police Drug Task Force, and two vice officers that work specifically in the town of Christiansburg. We have a police secretary assigned to operations, and she handles our advice and accreditation. Support service, uh, we have a detective lieutenant. We have four case working detectives. We have an internet crimes against children sergeant, internet crimes against children detective, a crime prevention sergeant, three school resource officers, an ordinance officer, a dispatch coordinator, nine communication officers, three police secretaries in that division. Two are records clerks, the other is a records clerk, but she dual purposes as a grant coordinator. We'll talk a little bit in the presentation about our grant coordinator and some of the initiatives that we, that we work very hard on in grants, and I know that's something the council has been talking about. 74 total agency employees, 57 of those were sworn, 17 civilian, two, two part-time, a uh, parking enforcement officer, and a fleet manager. So this, this is one area I want to talk about um, that you may not have a great deal of information about, and that's accreditation. There's a lot of law enforcement agencies across the state who are accredited. There's some that are, that are not. Um, simply to be accredited is, is very difficult. It's very time consuming. We're spending a lot of resources to make this happen. And I'll talk about why I think it is one of the most important things we do in law enforcement. So to your left, you have Lieutenant Tim Brown and Donna Akers who manage our accreditation process. I will mention that these two just received an award this week at the Bailey Act Accreditation Conference. And they are two of 23 in the state who are certified CAP instructors. So they just received that certification last week. Accreditation. I'm not going to read all of that information, but I'm going to paraphrase that. And simply accreditation sets a standard for law enforcement to follow. They set a standard where law enforcement agencies have to meet. And I'll talk about how many standards we meet. 777 standards we have to meet. Those standards make us do things that we may not do every day, little things. But those little things make it makes us a better law enforcement organization and better apt to serve our community. Sorry, Mayor, I had to use 
That's fine. There's the young yeah, man. <laughs> so the accreditation process. Initially, the agency was accredited in 2000. It's a four-year reaccreditation process. We're coming up for research in June of 2016, and that's when we'll be able to take our picture together, Mayor. Again, I said 777 standards. Uh, those two, Lieutenant Brown has other duties. He manages our narcotics unit as well. But a big part of his job and 95% of Donna's job is accreditation. Another thing I'd like to talk about, you know a little bit about it, but I want to make sure you understand what the process is because this is a big thing. Uh, our Certified Crime Prevention Community Program. The big blue signs that you see in town, that's what this is. Um, I'm happy to say that there's only 12 communities in the Commonwealth of Virginia that are certified, and that's counties, cities, municipalities, there's 12, and only three of those are municipalities. So this is um, not easy. Um, I think in 2006, that's one of the things I brought to council that I wanted to do. Um, they have talked for many years about that saving our homeowners insurance rates. Now that has not come forward, but we're still hoping that will happen. Uh, we were initially accredited in 2010. It's a three-year process. Uh, we're due for reaccreditation in 2016. So we have this accreditation and our state law enforcement accreditation in 2016. It's going to be very busy. Our agency must meet 19 core safety elements. Most of these are crime prevention related. And we'll talk about our crime prevention operation um, and how much work they actually do in a year. You'll be amazed uh, because that this program is managed by our crime prevention unit. You have a handout on crime prevention services that we perform in a year. You'll see there that in fiscal year 14-15, we participated in 170 public events and gave 18 public trainings. The majority of those were given by two individuals, Sergeant Philip Townley and Officer Nathan Dell, who is our crime prevention officer. Those two gentlemen have a heavy workload. And they have a heavy workload, but it's probably one of the most important things we do in this community. Uh, crime prevention, it's been a topic in law enforcement for 50 years. Crime prevention to me is building that relationship with our community, being out, being at public events, letting people know who we are. So I'm passionate about crime prevention and that's why we work very hard in that. Uh, the one thing I'll mention from these slides is that SRO Alan Klein attended the Yobaso, which is Youth of Virginia speaking out against drunk driving and alcohol. Uh, he attended the summer camp. We have a very vibrant Yobaso club at the high school. This summer he was named New School Resource Officer of the Year by the State Association from Yobaso. So he worked very diligently in that program and has worked hard as an SRO. Okay, talk a little bit about services performed. What do we do? That's something we could sit and talk an hour about if we broke down all the numbers. But the over 38,000 services performed in that one fiscal year. Uh, those numbers include 23,000 calls for service into our dispatch center, 5,200 traffic citations, over 2,100 criminal investigations, to over 2,100 investigations. Um, obviously, my four caseworker detectives cannot do all of that. A lot of our patrol officers are working patrol. They're still following up on cases. There's a, there's a lot to those jobs. Okay, grants. I know that's something council's talked about. Um, that bottom number, over a half a million dollars in grants secured by our police department last year. Um, we are very proactive in that respect. Uh, our grant coordinator's been doing it for 20 years. She knows what she's doing. Her job specifically is to seek out, find grants, apply for grants, manage the grant afterward. Chief, at the, this is for a one-year period? That's for a one-year period. The now, asset was, forfeiture, that civil forfeiture? That would, no, that, the asset forfeiture transfer program, yes. and as soon as I say that, Val starts to cringe because I got her in the middle of this one. So simply what that is is a partnership with us and the Mental Health Association okay. uh, to provide less lethal weapons, training, and other things for uh, access in mental health situations. Okay. So we are the fiscal agent for that grant. That's why Bows 
stringent because we have to manage that for all the agencies in this region to spend that money. That, that 452 is not Christiansburg Police, that's a regional money, but it, we secured the grants, so it goes to my grants. So it has nothing to do with civil forfeitures or anything no. like that pursuant to a criminal case? Just, okay. That's a, yeah. that's a DOJ federal grant. Absolutely. So that's some more proactive in, we're going to continue to be proactive in grants uh, because I think that saves our municipality money and we're going to continue to do that. The bulletproof vest now, uh, what percentage of your people have that? Everyone. In my policy, they're mandated to wear those if they're in a patrol capacity. Were well, they take it in the car with them? They wear it. They're, they wear it's worn it. under their bed, under their uniform. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, narcotics investigations. We talked about um, where I have our folks. We've got a member on the DEA drug task force, one on the state police. That is very important regionally. Um, there's a lot of, lot of things that flow in and around us through our organization and to have those federal and state contacts is very important. Just last year in our municipality, just a few things I'll point out. 12 meth labs, which is down from 22 last year, so we're pleased about that. Uh, but we're still working hard on that because that's a problem in our community. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's not. Methamphetamines is a problem here. It's a problem in southwest Virginia. And we're going to continue to be very proactive in that respect to rid our community of that. One, one thing that sticks out to me here is we have 207 active narcotic cases under or pending indictment at this time. That's a lot of cases for, for four gentlemen who work sometimes day and night. Uh, 16 postal interdictions. One thing you guys, you know, we have canines, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, we do a lot of postal interdiction. There's a lot of marijuana, heroin, cocaine coming through UPS, FedEx, and the U.S. Postal Service. So we work with them monthly to run their substations with our canines to try to interdict any kind of narcotics that's coming into our jurisdiction. The bottom part of that slide is 667 hours of surveillance and 164 hours of interdiction conducted in that year period. What does that mean, hours of surveillance? Surveillance would be, Example. for instance, we get information that someone is selling narcotics, uh, causing disruption, or units may have to sit on a location for a week at a time to document in order to have probable cause for a search warrant or Outside overtime and reimbursement. I, I put this in because it, this seems to come up every budget cycle. Uh, when my budget comes through and my budget says 165000 for overtime, there's always a question about 165000 That's a lot of money for overtime. And yes, I would ask that same question. This slide shows that we work a lot of outside overtime that's reimbursed back to the municipality. In one year, we worked almost 3,000 3, hours of outside overtime. And when I say outside overtime, which you take football games, um, Belk, Walmart, uh, Blue Ridge Church, VDOT, uh, an array. We have a different array of outside overtime, which gives our officers an opportunity to earn overtime money, but that money comes back into the municipality. But I have to budget for that up front as, as an expenditure line item. Okay, our, our canines, I will tell you up front, our dog on the left, which is Odin, uh, is broke. He broke a foot, and he's just about back up to speed. And my handler on the right is broke. He's, he's about back up to speed. So, so July 13 through September 2015, the dog and his handlers, over 700 hours of training. Um, these are and can be liabilities in the law enforcement culture. That's why we train. That's why these gentlemen are as up to speed um, with their job as anybody we have. Uh, because the in return for canines surely outweighs any liability. Um, the one thing I will tell you, we run citizen police academies, um, teen police academies, and some, some have been in our academies. Um, that's the first thing they want to see. People want to see our dogs. That's a great community relation tool. Um, we let them see our dogs. Now, they're German Malinois, 
and they're a little hyper, and they're intimidating at times, but they are a great animal. Uh, in this time period, those animals have been deployed 136 times. When I talk about deployment, that could be locker searches at the school, which the school asks us to do, vehicle searches, uh, human tracks, and even uh, suspect apprehension. Probably one of the hottest topics in law enforcement today, and you guys may have even talked about this at the VML conference, I couldn't imagine that it didn't come up, and that's body cameras on police officers. Um, most of you know that we have in-car cameras in every police vehicle that we have. Um, it's an expensive tool, but we have to have that in today's environment. Uh, the body camera pilot, there's been a heavy push nationwide to implement body cameras on every police officer in America. Um, I'm not telling you that I disagree with that. I'm telling you how I plan to approach that is to do a one-year study, to do a one-year pilot on the body cameras. We do have seven body cameras that are in. We have just finalized the policy. Uh, in November, we plan to deploy those seven and do a pilot study for one year. Chief, how, how heavy is a body camera? It's, it's not heavy. So it doesn't, it doesn't it's even, about that big. Where's it? Where, where at on the? Yeah, I have to wear it on the lapel. Okay, so that's, that doesn't infringe upon your ability to movement and stuff like that at all? Uh, it will be awkward for a while for them, I would imagine. But, um, you know, that year is going to give us an opportunity to evaluate uh, some of the things that we're going to need. It's a big budget item. You know, my estimation is over a quarter of a million dollars to outfit the entire agency with body cameras. So I want to make sure I do my research and, and <coughs> we have documentation for me to bring to council during budget work session to say, Here's what it's going to cost. Here's the pros and cons, and uh, give you my best evaluation. It would probably uh, involve some other things like additional training and stuff like that that you'll detect through the study that you may need. And the hardware, uh, the storage space, records retention, those right. are some big issues. Yep. Uh, and You're going to be, probably hold those for a certain time frame as well, probably for pursuant to any investigation. And if it's, a, if it's a criminal investigation yeah. that has not been solved, we may have to hold that forever. That's right. mm -hmm. So, But I will tell you that my perspective on body cameras and in-car cameras, and it's always been this, I want that. Even as a police officer on the street, I wanted that. That many times helped me diffuse situations, uh, and it, it holds us accountable. It holds us accountable. It holds the citizen accountable. And uh, I think it's productive, and I think it's a good thing for law enforcement. We just have to talk about how we implement it and how we afford it. Now here's where I normally talk for about 30 minutes. <laughs> Mr. Tom came through our police academy. He knows I get pretty pumped up about strategic planning. Uh, I have I provided you a document on strategic planning. What that is is our the core of our plan. It's our goals and objectives. Uh, I am so passionate about goals and objectives and I believe in them. Every new employee, day two, they, they're meeting with me. I'm going over our goals and objectives with them. On day two, at the end of that day, they should know every vision that not I have, but as an organization, we have moving forward in the next three years. So strategic planning is important to our organization. There's, I would say there's less than 50% law enforcement agencies in America do strategic planning vibrantly. Um, but it's, it's the right thing to do. It helps us stay on track. It helps us plan for the future. It helps me during budget work session uh, because I know what we need. Um, how we get to that point and the one thing about how this is put together is interesting to most. And I stole this from, from an old Army colonel who's 80 years old who still works for me that does our strategic planning. You have to incorporate your people. Your people have to have a say in what your vision is going to be organizationally. So every year in the March staff meeting, each area within our organization receives an email that says, by next staff meeting, your division will have two goals or two things within the organization that need to be improved. So those come up, which means we have 20. The next month's staff meeting, we review those and we narrow it to the top five priorities and then the command staff implements those into our strategic plan. So our troops, people that have been on the job for six months, can make a recommendation and see that, make it into our goals and objectives for the next three years. So we have 
great buy-in. Our new employees know what our plan is moving forward. And I won't go all the way through that. I'll just kind of show you how that's laid out. For example, if you look on page one, which is the index, if there's an area in there that interests you, let's say under training 4.6, that would be on page eight. You can turn to that and you can see what, what steps we have made over the past two years uh, to try to meet that objective. So take that home. If you have questions about it, again, call me, come by and see me. I'm happy to explain that. Uh, and that's the, the shortest I've ever spoke on that. <laughs> So that uh, concludes the presentation. I'm open for any questions that you may have about our organization or my visions. I have uh, two things. I, uh, I, I guess I should be congratulating all the uh, police force, uh, maybe not just you, maybe one of the county, on how uh, this flag situation was handled. And, uh, May the principal of Christiansburg High School, but it seemed like all of you worked together well, and I think that uh, you know a, a, a tricky situation, in my opinion, was helped very well handled. Thank you. The other question I have is, we talked last spring about hiring um, an officer for the two uh, elementary elementary schools. And has that gone through, or is that going in process right now? Can you can you give me an update on that? Well, I can tell you that we hired them, and they're working in the elementary schools. They're working. You guys got to go ahead and work in elementary school. Don't beat around the bush, Mark. That's what you really think, man. Chief, don't you? But every everything, and you think what we we did is I believe we we hired one. Is that right? That's right. And you, you feel that that's going well, and, and uh, th th things are going in the right direction on that. Yes, sir. Going and the kids well. are the kids are getting something out of it. And I know the mothers are. You know. uh, Chief, I, yes, sir. I've got one quick comment for you. The um, at VML, I, I may have drawn the short straw, and I went to a particular conference, which really I didn't think impacted Christians very at all. But I found it extremely interesting what I once I got in there, and it was about the. Um, uh, Investigations for um, your uh, like well, basically like drug task force, but it was uh, looking at uh, motels and motel rooms and extended stay. And once it's over a certain period of time, and, and it was very very interesting. And it was actually put on by a police chief in an area above uh, Richmond. And uh, they were talking about ways in which their the, the currents of uh, cost and expenses related to that, and what the locale is trying to do. And they talked about meth and and and, and trying to um, I forgot. The, appropriate term but uh, when you go in you're trying to rectify a methamphetamine situation where you have to there's cost incurred and it gave me an opportunity very very proud opportunity to mention about Christiansburg about our meth lab policy and what we've uh, uh, put in place uh, many years ago with uh, Mr. Helms well after the uh, meeting was over I walked up to shake his hand and he looked at me and I had my little like, badge on if you will whatever it was and he said oh Mark Sisson I know him real well <laughs> and immediately, and I'm, okay, uh, yeah, that's, that's what Chief, that's right. It took me a second, he, he just got me off guard, but apparently he's been in contact with you about the way they're actually implementing their procedures, I guess their, uh, uh, their uh, SOPs for how they're dealing with that issue, even though it doesn't exactly impact us. Uh, I'm not trying to toot your horn, but it was nice to know that they're reaching out to the town of Christiansburg, a uh, certified crime prevention community, to ask me how we do those things, how we're dealing with that. And, uh, but he was very quick. To mention you and to mention that uh, he's spoken with you numerous times, and unfortunately, I can't remember the, the yeah, name. Cole his name. It may have been. I can't remember his Who's name. Cole Super nice guy. Uh, I'll, but, I'll look it up, Mark. I've got the. But he, he was very appreciative of the efforts of uh, being able to call you directly and speak with you on that topic. So, uh, again, it's a very proud moment for Christianburg, in my opinion, that we're thought of that way um, amongst crime uh, prevention models across the state. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Make a short comment. It's not a question. We all know what we have in the Chief System, and we know uh, the tone that he's set, you know, living, uh, walking the talk, so to speak, uh, as an example for the others. But just this evening, uh, we see the uh, advertisement for the Fall Festival mm -hmm. this weekend in light of 
you know what's going on across our country. I uh, thank the partnerships you're, you've forged in the past and even right now. Just tonight was another example of the type of programs that you're doing, uh, te teaming with NAACP for the Fall Festival this Saturday. Uh, there's a saying we have in the consulting business, uh, I don't care how much you know until I know how much you care. <laughs> and and you, you and your staff are clearly setting, you know, the right tone for not only crime prevention, but also just, you know, com uh, the people in, I think, most citizens of Christiansburg, just during their tenure, have been able to tell a big difference in the approachability and, and uh, so forth, and they're scared of you guys. It's, I mean, Christiansburg is in place you monkey around. People know that. <laughs> so I didn't mean to go on it, but I, I think the direction you've taken the department so far, the trajectory, so to speak, and, and all that is very clear to, uh, to me anyway. I'm just one person, but it's very clear to me. And this, again, this evening is just one other example of that. And Mayor, the uh, help said the next girl is also affiliated with the Right. I believe October 17th, so that's another way you can part with in. our young people. Mm -hmm. Mark, we're very proud of, of you and your department. Uh, you have, you provide a, a constant source of leadership. You have a good command staff and, and you work well as a team. So uh, on behalf of council and the citizens, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Discussions by mayor and council members. Town council's intention to adopt an ordinance in regards to a rezoning request by George Smith, agent for Peppers Ferry Investments, LLC, for property located at 915 Peppers Ferry Road, Northwest Tax Parcel 434-A-16 from R2, two-family residential to B3 general business, the property contains one acre and is scheduled as residential in the future land use map of the Christopher Comprehensive Plan. The public hearing was held on September the 22nd. And I believe that all this information is enclosed in your town council packet. I move that we adopt the ordinance as defined in the agenda. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? One quick mention, Mr. Mayor. I don't believe anyone on the Planning Commission was against this. It was a unanimous four, except for those that were absent. Eight, eight, four, and three reps. Okay. Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Councilman Van Hitcher? Aye. I believe that's six zero, is that correct? Thank you. Discussion regarding the council follow-up task list. Um, Mr. Bishop, that was yours, your request, and I will tell you that uh, Mr. Helms and I have been kind of working on it. There's, we found several things that have been completed and been been acted on, so uh, within the next, part of the next council meeting or so, we'll, we'll give you the, the, the better updated list. Mr. Helms, is that correct? I have some information tonight if you can pull over. That's fine. You guys want to go over some of it tonight, or you want to have a work session on it, or how do you want to fly? I'm usually not in favor of work sessions, but I think this could, this is worthy of one. Yes. I think we've got behind on some things, and we didn't really talk at BML so much about some things. That, uh, oh, yes. Uh, I think there's a lot on there. Uh, I think there's a lot that have yeah. been, <clears throat> that's still on there that right. I think we've reached a, we, probably a couple of them we, we may need to step up and we did not have any any specific times or dates. We may need to go ahead and reach out to some of those. Well, why don't we go ahead and schedule a work session maybe one hour before a council meeting? So I, I agree with Mr. Yes. Bishop that yeah. we need to look at this, but I'd also like to have that full, it's a lot on there, have that full list that we can kind of review beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, okay. uh, show off the... Uh, the work sessions with the downtown development group, are they on Tuesday nights? Tuesday nights. The next little bit. Before a while. Before a while. Yeah. So what we may need to do is look at another night for a work session. And, and Jim, I, I do respect that an hour before, but I would say with that list, which probably <laughs> includes some of our 2020 vision items that we, we had on the list and then we included it in 2020, 
I'd say we're going to need at least, let's say, two hours to go over that. Do well, you think we ought to go ahead and get the revised list they got it before we make the decision on this? Yes. So let's make a decision on work sessions at the next council meeting. Yes, okay. yeah. and, and Mr. Helms and I will forward what we, the, the condensed list of things that we have moved on. I feel like that there's action been taken on. So we'll get all that information to you all. Thank you. Where's Tom? Mr. Mayor, at this time, um, I would move the town council into a closed meeting as stipulated in the agenda, and specifically a request for a closed meeting under Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A7 for a consultation with legal counsel and briefings by staff members or consultants pertaining to actual or probable litigation where such consultation and briefing and open meeting would adversely affect the negotiating or litigating posture of the public body. In consultation with legal counsel employed or retained by a public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel. For the purposes of this subdivision, probable litigation means litigation that has been specifically threatened or on which the public body or its legal counsel has a reasonable basis to believe will be commenced by or against a known party. Nothing in this subdivision shall be construed to permit the closure of a meeting merely because an attorney representing the public body is in attendance or has been consulted on a matter. The closed meeting pertains to backcountry.com. I would make that in the form of a motion, Mr. Mayor. Second. I have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop. Aye. Uh -huh. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Councilman mm -hmm. Van Hoosier? Aye. I believe that to be 6 0. We're going to take about a two minute, three minute break. We'll reconvene the open right. meeting. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would move to certify that the Town Council of the Town of Christianburg meeting and closed meeting. In the best of each member's knowledge, discussed only public business matters lawfully exempted from opening meeting requirements by Virginia law, and only such matters as are identified in the resolution to enter into closed meetings. And that is in the form of a motion. I'll second it. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Councilman Van Hoosier. Aye. That would be 6-0. Uh, we will not, Council will not take action on this matter at, any, at this particular time. So uh, with that, we will move on. Uh, Brian, you got a... Um, I was asked by um, Councilman Hubbard to give a brief update on the Marketplace Shopping Center. Um, I've been in contact with their broker. As you know, we've been working with them off and on for a couple of years. Um, there have been some parties of interest on the in this region and parties of interest nationally. They have not made any deals or are anywhere near making any deals um, on that property. Um, so that's really the only report I can give in open session. Um, you know, over the years, various um, large retailers have looked at it but have passed on our region more than they've passed on the um, center itself. Um, when, when you have a retailer, they let's say they're going to do 100 stores next year um, or in two years, they have a market of let's say 150, 200 markets and you either make that cut or you don't make that cut. In some of the past discussions, uh, we have been bypassed on major retailers three times. So it's coming from corporate and apparently um, not as much on the local end or the owner's end as it is corporate end is to large retailers. And that's why Kohl's is now going into the mall um, rather than that site in particular. Okay. It's not what I wanted to hear, but thank you. <sighs> I guess we need to start developing the taxing plan to tax empty. You can also <laughs> you can always <laughs> <start> away. <laughs> I thought you were the one that said the sound was on. Huh? <laughs> Maybe I misunderstood. Well, I think we can do that, but we can't be specific. We have uh, there, there is, we still have it, don't we, Barry, every year. We inspect all the empty. We don't go in them, but we uh, you'll keep them. They have to keep it up. Yeah, it's like it's not specific. Yeah. The, best, the best thing we could do, I'll say it one, one more time. You heard me say it. If we could, the town could make that a four-way stop at Shopper's Way. That place would take off. Mark my words, it would take off. The access to that parcel is terrible. 
Okay. That's it. Yeah, I think we all know that. Now there is one but good, I mean, if we want a project to work on, that would be one. <laughs> yeah. I think there's one good part about this. They have a new agent who was trying, uh, who was involved in, this, in the selling of property. Is yes. that correct? And th this a, yeah. group is, from what I've heard, this is what Charlie told me last Charlie. July, that this, the, this company Charlie. is a bigger company and they are more wheelers and dealers. And um, from what I've heard, Bashadi is, is not asking for that much of a, a price range right now. Is it, that, that's pretty much true. Uh, He's from, not, not from, that far uh, out, of, out of line. From what I've heard, yes. Yeah. Um, the, the asking price is about $13.5 million, which is a million above assessed value. Well, thank you, Brian. Thank you. The, Marketplace horses in a coma, so we're going to move on before we kill him. <clears throat> Thank you. Council reports, uh, Mr. Bishop. Uh, yes, yeah, I started to report last night. Chief Hanks attended a meeting with the Chrisburg Rotaries on High Street. Uh, he presented them with some safety items, and they gave him some, I believe, it was stuff bears to use to give the children during stressful situations. Good. So, I'm just going to have last night's meeting. Good. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Powell? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, three things to report. Uh, first and foremost, I spoke with Mr. Showalter, and I believe we're going to have a water and sewer committee meeting moving forward. I think uh, we're going to be looking at um, some things we talked to Mr. Helms about before, but I think we might be focusing on some of the recycling efforts um, and be trying to bring those things to the forefront. Um, secondly, uh, I guess for not a second report, but Mr. Helms, I hope that once they can the, the, uh, uh, Tourism gets their website up that we can get a link to that. I just, it was on my mind the whole meeting. I want to mention that. Uh, but uh, this is really kind of exciting. This is something that um, I want to report on last year. Unfortunately, with the bridge uh, debacle, uh, we couldn't do this last year. But this year, on the 31st of October, uh, which is a Saturday at 9 a.m., will be our first, hopefully first annual. It's getting scary on the Huckleberry, which will be our kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a fun run. It's 5K. It's going to loop from the. Um, Recreation Center over at the Renville Bridge around the, the uh, uh, pretty much like around the uh, mall area and then comes back. Um, but it really accentuates the, the, uh, the uh, bridge because you have to go over twice. Um, it, uh, race day registration starts on the, on the day of the race, of course, at 7.30, ends at 8.30. Um, and uh, then the race begins probably at 9. There's prizes for the uh, costumes. There's prizes for the finishers and different uh, age brackets, first, second, and third. Um, but uh, I think it's a great way to accentuate our bridge and, and, and kind of get into the, the season a little bit. If you are into the season, but that particular uh, day in and of itself, something great for kids as well and families. Um, no pets allowed. They want to be safe, of course. Um, but uh, also neat is that um, this is kind of demonstrates a partnership with the Montgomery County Public Schools as well. I believe that um, uh, Shane Gwynn is uh, helping to lead the charge on this along with the. Uh, uh, with the recreation center and uh, so he's actually the, the contact person with email um, there is a charge it's twenty dollars if you um, sign up by the uh, 16th or i'm sorry if you mail your your, your uh, payment in and it's postmarked by the 16th it's 25 the day of the race but uh, everyone is uh, is uh, in i guess uh, requested to be there if at all possible and to be dressed up i think mayor wise it would be great to have that uh, uh, you be out there mr mayor and uh and to help uh, Create the festivities, but uh, anyway, I, I think it's really—I think it's gonna be a really great idea. They wouldn't do it last year, but just with the way the bridge was, they could not do it, and uh, that's all uh, I have to report at this time. Thank you, sir. Mr. Van Hoosier. I don't really have much to report. I will say, in the presence of Chief Sisson, that uh, uh, Detective Brown and the person he works with with the uh, okay. video. Pornography and so forth. We'll be making a presentation to our Kiwanis Club on the 22nd. Uh, I've told him he's only got 20 minutes, so I, I don't know whether I'm going to have a problem or not. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate he's willing to do that, and he is a member of our Kiwanis. Very good. Mr. Stipes? No reports other than to say I appreciate the council's. Uh, company and camaraderie and relationship building at BML was we did some good stuff and uh, enjoyed it very much. Show over. Uh, 
Uh, Central Business District Advisory met again tonight. Um, we're, we're on, uh, Randy, did they settle on um, the area or where? We're... No, I'm going to have maps and okay. I guess rough, up, rough maps for people to kind of find it. For. But give you sort of an idea of where we're going with it, <clears throat> which I'm more of a the smaller the better, but I recognize that you know. A lot of times you don't get what you want, and uh, uh, it's going to be more of a, it's a larger area. It's going to incorporate the middle school, College Street, um, First Street. It's a big square, so, and that's for our downtown section. And then Cambry is going to go from Amelia's uh, all the way down, of course, uh, across the tracks, depot, and up to the community center uh, on High Street. So, I think that's going to be our, our official areas for the advisory committee. But it's going along uh, great. Uh, we'll have a, have a lot of people, a lot of input, so be looking for a lot of interesting things coming up. That's it. You know, I was just happy to see that the uh, the farmhouse is going to reopen in That's January. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, hopefully uh, January. It'll be, uh, there's a lot of work being done over there from my understanding. And I tell you, the uh, one of the owners is Roger Neal who is a, a graduate of Auburn High School, and uh, Roger has already been uh, successful in a couple of restaurants down in uh, Roanoke, so I think that this is going to be uh, something that's going to open up and, and be a real asset for the, for the town again. Okay. Mr. Mayor, there's one thing I forgot to mention about the October 31st. The uh, breakfast is actually provided for any uh, anybody that wants to run. There's those breakfast refreshments and that children uh, can come by from 8 to 11 in the morning that day, and they're having a, 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 a trunk or treat. Uh, they'll have that available for the kids as well. So it's more than just a race. It's kind of, a, again, it's a real true family day. And not to mention a one-of-a-kind designed uh, T-shirt. That's right. That, that's right. That's right. Uh, a student from my wife's class designed it. So. Uh, the only thing that I have, I, a couple of weeks ago, I sent out an email to each of the council members. We are going to be in, we are needing citizen representation on the cemetery committee. We're down to three. So I'm asking you to, to do a little thinking about this. We, we, Jim will have some free time in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I got plans for Jim. <laughs> Jim don't know the plans I have for him, but I got plans for Jim. Uh, but if you can think of someone, uh, if you have a question about it, I talked to Adam uh, down, down, downtown. He chairs that thing. But it's to the point, and Steve, you're, you're familiar with it, but we're down to three people, and there's some decisions still need to be made. We need to get some, some more people on this thing. So. Oh, that's for sure. I mean, we've had several people have to leave, but we've been talking about this columbarium for a year and a half, two years, and we are right there getting ready to order it and setting it up, and this is going to be just a, and it's going to be, I mean, if you're into columbariums, it's extremely interesting. From a distance, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to try to get So, if you have any ideas. We have bargain, we have bargain prices for all of you guys. <laughs> for those of you that would like to make an ash of yourself, we have a place. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, tell manager's report. Uh, I'm busy on the 31st. I'm in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <there we are. laughs> Um, Swimming Save Lives Saves Lives Foundation Board of Trustees has approved a grant in the amount of fifteen hundred for our aquatic center to provide adult learn to swim lessons. So we'll be working on that soon. Um, travel vouchers from VML can get those turned in. Appreciate it. And. Um, The Recreation Center, I mean, the uh, Truman Wilson Master Plan. I'd like to have a work session on that if we can during the week of 9th of November. Uh, they're, they're getting the concept plans. They should, they're going to present them to the advisory committee on that Thursday, I think it is, before that. 
and then so uh, Thursday the fifth they're going to present it. Fourth, I'm sorry, fourth. Uh, we'll Wednesday the fourth. Okay. So we before that or after that? We'll have it after that. Okay. Uh, what day are you thinking, Mr. Helms? Well, the tenth is a council meeting, but we have the central advisory, central business advisory committee that day. So uh, Monday the ninth, the eleventh is Veterans Day. Uh, Thursday the twelfth, probably the ninth or the twelfth would be. I can't make it on the ninth. And I, I couldn't be. I could well. You can't be in the ninth at all, Mr. Hubbard? Yeah, I can't, okay. no, no. Mondays are bad for me. Twelfth will work for me, sure. Twelfth's good. Twelfth, I think, works for me. Twelfth works for me as well. Do you have a particular time, Mr. Hamels? What time is it? Six, seven, six, thirty-six. Quarter six, is six hope for you? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm my court's here, so I'm done at four thirty. Six six o'clock on the twelfth. You put that up there. Okay. Uh, that's it. That's exciting. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to that. You want to move that? The regional, <laughs> regional suppers passed the uh, brochure around for BML's regional suppers. Yeah. Abington, Rono, that's the two closest ones. One's the 28th of October, one's the 29th. Any other interested in going? You know or me? Me. Let Michelle know. Very good. Anything else to come before council? I'll entertain that motion. So, so moved and seconded. Oh, I did have one. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go back in the council. <laughs> Sorry. Back in session. That was a fast meeting. Oh, it's got pictures involved. We got a problem. Uh, I think I'm looking at that. I'm about to raise that shortly. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Okay, I got a letter from Asset Solutions Corporation uh, trading as Joey L. Simmons and Company. Uh, He's asked if we would be interested in the lot. Okay. Corner pickoff and first. And that's this lot right here. There's Dr. Jones's office. Yeah. Okay. There was a house there and he tore yeah. it down, right? Yeah. Oh, he didn't. His or yeah, it was somebody did. Yeah. And he has offered it to us for $125,000 if we want to. That's, that's the price to, to the town or anyone else. Mm -hmm. So I know my feelings, but. I'm going to say because don't, uh, a real estate agent already have it, right? Probably not. Oh, yet. if it's the one I saw, they got a sign. Oh, really? Okay. A real estate yeah, agent. I think, I think I've seen it. I don't think yeah. I'm in that at all. I, I don't I, think I'm interested. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see where it's located at in the signs. There's yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think at this point, I, I would. Certainly suggest that you, you know, thank Jones. Asset Solutions for considering us, but at this time, I, I don't think it fits within our within our still, still got scheme of things. Do well, you guys? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm very sorry. Run, run. run.